The answer is one at a time. Jesus gave us the key to this increase. Being faithful, being faithful doesn't mean not taking risks. Okay? Taking risks, getting out of your comfort zone is a must. Both the servant with five and two talents had to use their talents to multiply them. Now, Jesus, the, ser- the master did not give instructions how to do it. He did not say go and, and talk to X, Y, Z, and then you can multiply. Those individuals had to step out of faith and say, God, you have entrusted me with this. I'm going to be faithful to carry those out. The question is, can God trust me to manage his talents? That is what, that's the, the fundamental question. Everyone always says, I want God to bless me. God never said, I was, I'm going to give you talents only if you succeed with them. He measures triumph based on your faithfulness. He's going to make you succeed based on your faithfulness. So if you are faithful to that talent, if God has called you to come in here and just vacuum this floor, you, you come here and you're here 30 minutes early, oh, so I can just make sure there's nothing there on the floor, and I stay, and I stay 30 minutes after just to make sure the floor is clean, and then God is going to say, this man has that faithfulness. And then the key to the increase was, we read what in the verse, the key to the increase. Verse, give me a second here. <laughs> um, Twenty-one. His master said to him, "Well done, good and faithful servant. You are you were faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy." So when, with me being faithful with my talent, my abilities, I'm not comparing my talent with Pastor Bob's, Sister Doreen, I'm not comparing my talent with anyone else. This is my innate talent that God has birthed in me. So with me being faithful to it, I'm not going to be lazy and stay back and just stay, sit in the shadows and say, okay, well, here's a role, I'm here, present, present. Uh, you, saw, you saw me today, I'm here, you, you know, so, those are, the, those are the things that God is going to reward and increase your talents. Because guess what? When you're talented in your keyboards, then God is say, okay, now you're ready to be the worship leader. Now you can lead multiple people. Now you can go train the youth. You can go train the children to play the piano. So you're using your talents to increase. That is the key. Be faithful with it. Now, us being wise to say, I don't want to just pick five random talents and say, okay, these are my five, and now I'm going to exhort energy that wasn't meant for me. So going back and saying, Holy Spirit, what, is it, what are the things that I, am, I know from the shadow of a doubt that I can do to the best of my abilities and be faithful with them? So how does God measure what is good? He based it on how faithful you are with his talents. If you notice that he's first said good and faithful. So what was that? How did God measure good? Based on your faithfulness. So if you are faithful with your talent, then you will be called good. I want us to analyze ourselves through the Holy Spirit and just pray for the Holy Spirit to bring light of all of our talents that he has entrusted us with. Let's start with this new season, especially the season that the church is going through right now, a Fountain of Life, with our youth ministry and the revival happening in different areas of the church. I want us to just start praying, God, how can I go back and use my talents to glorify the kingdom? And this, this requires time, as Ashley was singing, time. Just give me one more minute, Lord. Just I want to be in your presence. I want to be there. I want to see, Lord, how can I sit there and, and, and know the things that you are speaking to me? And it's, you can't be fast-paced. You have, you have to slow down and you have to say, God, let me be in your presence so I know how to rear my child. How, how, do I, how am I faithful? How would I become faithful? It's by me being intentional with that. Um, 
We have to be ready. We have to be ready by, for the King of Kings who's returning soon. And as I was reading last night, I was just praying, saying, God, just give me the right words to speak to this congregation. And the word of God just, just started speaking and popping up for me to, to read. And I, could, I put the Bible down, and I w- I'll wake up again. and say, okay, i got to read this again. Uh, so Revelations 20, starting at 11. Revelations 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and one seated on it. Earth and heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. I also saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were open. Another book was open which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by what was written in the books. Then the sea gave up its dead and death and Hades gave up their dead. All were judged according to their works. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Anyone not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Those words in Revelation is a wake-up call for the believers. We as believers cannot be dormant. We cannot sit back and just take it in. This is not, this is not just sit and take, sit and take. You have to participate. You have to participate and you have to, be, uh, you have to be on fire for Christ, knowing that God is coming back again. We have heard as children... The Lord is coming back. The Lord is coming back. And some of us are reaching our 80s and 90s. And the Lord is still coming back. The Lord is coming back. We have to be ready. And we're going to be, if you know, all the works will be written down. So God is going to come give an account to the things that he has promised us. So with that being said, we, we have to just continue saying, Lord, just speak to us. Remind us of our talents, that we go from day to day. And the number one place, and I, and I, and I was praying that God gave me this word for the youth of our church, that especially our youth, who we know are becoming to, to get aware of the Holy Spirit and, and the, kings of, the things of God, we have to be entrusted to mold them to know their talents, to be aware, self-aware of their talents the Holy Spirit. So that's one of us, but my responsibility this uh, this church is to wake up our, our children and say, this is God's expectations, and he's going to come and inspect what he expects. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and just um, worship leaders come back up. Uh, if we can just, um, we're going to go ahead and transition from here to the youth ministry, but before we do that, I want to take a couple minutes to just Worship in, in worship before we transition to the youth room, and we're going to pray and dedicate the youth room today. I would like for everyone to be there, and we can um, dedicate that room that God is going to bring. He's going to bring revival. He's going to bring accountability. He's going to bring a fresh word through the Holy Spirit, and that he's going to entrust us to impact the next generation. So we're just thankful and grateful. Holy Spirit, I ask that right now, Lord. You know the hearts, Lord. You know the things that you have revealed to us today, Lord. I ask that you, Lord, just awaken us, Lord. Open our eyes and ears, our spiritual ears, Lord, that we are going to see the talents that we have, Lord. The things that we said we were were going to do, Lord, give us that strength and that courage, Lord, to do those things. That we're going to line up the office, Pastor Bob, and we're going to just say, here I am. Put me in, coach. We're going to be in here moving things. And we're going to be ch- shaking this nation. We're going to bring revival to this community. And that we're going to, Lord, just with the talents that you have put in us, Lord, the enemy cannot prevail, Lord. That we're all connected and that we're all going to be speaking life into this next generation. Lord, thank, for, thank you, Lord, for the things that you're doing in us. Lord, thank you for the talents that you have entrusted us, Lord. Lord, teach us every day to, for us to be faithful in those things that you have entrusted us, Lord. Lord, you are great, and we are thankful for everything that you're doing, that you are in control, Lord, the things that we...
fear, Lord, the things that, as that man said, he was fearful. Lord, I rebuke that fear, and I declare, Lord, that you're going to give us courage to take the next land, Lord, that we're going to be like Joshua and just going to conquer the next land, Lord. I declare that this, this atmosphere in this room is going to start speaking to hearts and minds, Lord. Heavenly Father, I ask that right now, Lord, you just continue to work in us. Day by day, Lord, that you remind us of your word, that we are going to be doers and not just idle thinkers and lazy people, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.